hello and welcome back to my channel in this tutorial I will show you how to make a wind spinner like this one and it's a very easy tutorial so it's suitable for beginners and it works up real quick I'll have a separate tutorial for the amigurumi heart so I'll pop that in the description box below for you Okay, so let's get started. So I'm just going to take two colours for this tutorial. I'm going to take a white and a purple and my corresponding hook. So I'm just going to make a slip knot. Now if you're new to crochet, you can check out my playlist where you'll find I've got lots of tutorials on uh, crochet for absolute beginners. So do go check that out. I'm just going to chain 75 for this tutorial. Obviously you can chain as many as you like. So please go ahead, make your chains and I'll meet you back. Okay, so once you've made your chains, we're going to snip off our tail while I'm working yarn. Because I want all my stitches to face one way, so we're not going to be turning at the end of a row. So we're going to just go back to the very start. Take your working yarn and join into the very first stitch of your foundation chain and join with a slip stitch. Work a single crochet into that very first stitch which is a double crochet in the UK. From here it's just one single crochet into every stitch till the end of row one. Okay, so I'll let you carry on working your single crochets right to the end of the row and I'll meet you back. At the end of the row, snip off your working yarn, leaving a long tail, and I'll show you how to weave this in later. I'm going to go back to the very beginning of the row, and we're going to start row two by joining our new yarn. So I'm taking the white yarn here, and I'm going to join with a slip stitch into that very first chain. So you're inserting your hook, pulling up your yarn and then yarn over and pull through to make your slip knot. Leave a long tail so we can weave that in later. Just tighten it up a little. Then we're going to chain two and this acts as our first double crochet so I'm going to work another double crochet so that makes two in that one stitch. And we're going to repeat this all the way along for row two. So there's two double crochets which is a treble crochet in the UK in every stitch for row two. So as you can see, I've got two double crochets in every single stitch. Please pause the video at any time if you need to catch up. work these last few with you
there we go we're on our final two double crochets for row two okay so pull up your yarn and you just want to snip the working yarn leaving a long tail so go all the way back to the very beginning again for row three and in row three we are working three double crochets into every single stitch to the end of the row so that's a treble crochet in the UK so again take the colour that you're working with and you want to chain two after you've joined with a slip stitch and that is your first double crochet so you want to do another two in that very first stitch going straight into the next stitch you're working three double crochet Just repeat that all the way along till the end of row three. If your wind spin is not looking as it should, don't worry, I will show you how to shape it at the end. obviously this row is going to take a little bit more time so I'll let you pause the video and I'll meet you back at the end As you work all the way down to the end, it will start spiraling. So as you can see, it's starting to look like a wind spinner now. Here I'm approaching the end of row three and I'll just work my last few stitches with you.
just one more final one and there we go we've completed row three finally is a bit of a long one that so I'll just cut off my working yarn and then I'm gonna just have a look at what it's looking like so far if it's a little bit twisted it doesn't really matter at this point because we're gonna do our final row four and then I'll show you how to um you know to get it looking as a spiral which I'm sure you'll know how to do yourself so yeah there you go can you see this looks really nice and uh, you can change colors up to four times with this so you can just choose whatever colors you fancy to make yours in For row four we're going to carry on from where we've snipped off our tail and we're just going to insert our hook into that final stitch we'll be working a reverse single crochet which is also known as a crab stitch please check out my tutorials on my channel for how to work a reverse single crochet so you just want to join for row four with a slip stitch into that very first stitch so now we are simply working a single crochet but in reverse so I'll show you how I do that so you want to insert your hook into that same stitch that you've joined your working yarn and you are simply working a single crochet as you would then going into the next stitch and working another single crochet and you're just repeating that all the way to the end of row four if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial for this reverse stitch i do have that available on my channel so please do check that out It is a stitch that does take a little bit of practice but once you get into it you will start speeding up and finding your own rhythm as you work along the row. It's a really fun stitch to try and gives a lovely finish to any project. This final row four obviously is going to take a little bit more time so do pause the video and I'll meet you back. Almost at the end of row four now. And, uh, like I said you should have picked up a little bit of speed now with your reversing of crochets. Just 
just a few more to go the final one is a little bit tricky to go into and if you can't get your hook in it doesn't really matter even if you skip that stitch so once you've worked your final stitch just pull up a nice long tail so we can weave that in and there we go we've got our wind spinner made so all you want to do is go in like a spiral with your wind spinner and that will give it the shape that it needs to be in so if you just have a look what i'm doing just lining all of them up together underneath each other until you get to the end so we've untangled our wind spinner so it should look something like this taking the wind spinner so that all the stitches are facing towards you we're going to work on this end first to weave in our ends all my stitches are right way facing and then I'm just going to take a darning needle to weave in and form a loop on this side for hanging use a suitable darning needle that you have I'm going to take this thinner one because it is a little bit sharper and easy to work with so I'm just going to thread it and then I'm going to go through a point here and I'm not going to pull through all the way because we want that as a loop to hang our wind spinner from so you're just going to take your needle slowly out without pulling it fully through and then we're going to leave a little bit there so we can knot it onto one of the loops there so I'll just show you how I do that so I'm going to maybe about two or three knots so that it doesn't come undone okay so that little bit of yarn that is there we're going to weave that in and can you see we've got a nice big loop there to hang our wind spinner so I'm just going to first insert my needle in through stitches and then I'm going to thread it to just weave it through. If your tail's a bit longer you can go back the other way but because mine's just a little short tail I've only just gone in once. It won't come out and it's secure. So I'm just going to now move on to the rest of my tails using the same method. So you just want to weave in your tails as um, neatly as possible so that they don't come undone. 
So if you just watch closely where I'm feeding my needle, I like going through stitches that are closer together to hide my tails. I go in through one, one way and then I come back on myself. Obviously go through a different stitch when you come back on yourself because you don't want it to come the, the tail yarn to come back out as you pull it. And you don't want to be pulling too tight as well. You want to just, you know, ease it. And then just snip off your tail. So just carry on with the rest of your tails. And then I'll show you what I do for the other side. Okay, so we've just got our one final tail for this side and as you can see just basically go through where you went in before if you'd like because this for this you can't really see it because it's the middle of your wind spinner so just going in and out of the stitches then going back on yourself and snipping off your tail so you're almost there now to work on the other side Well, there you go as you can see everything's nice and neatly hidden away and we're just left with the loop so go on to the other side and now we work with these tails so go ahead and weave in all your tails just leave one purple tail not the center one the three double crochet don't weave that one in because I'm going to show you what I do with that so with the one purple tail that you've left just feed 
a few beads in there like I have on the other wind spinner so just threaded it and you want a nice long tail because you're gonna also feed that through the heart once we've made it and if you want to like pop a little charm on at the end it's up to you so it'll be fed through the heart and then we'll be not making a knot just below where those beads are so about there so you want a nice long tail just just so that you, you know you can do that you can all, always attach some yarn on if you haven't got enough that's not a problem so I've just taken a few beads here I'm going to be using like a meadow green and purple and sort of like greyish silvery tones to make up my beads for this end So again, a nice thin needle would be perfect for this, this job. Don't think my the grey one that I used would would have been suitable because the holes on these beads are quite quite narrow. So you need a nice narrow needle that's going to work best. So you just want to contrast your beads. So going from like a greyish tone to the meadow green, then to the purple. Just see how they work out for you. So I'm just going to pause and put this purple. This is quite nice. It's like got a marble finish to it. You can pick these up easily online. So I think the ones that these ones I've got are actually bought off ebay so just gotta have a look what there is as you can see got a nice marble finish to them and the other ones are like a like got a glittery finish to it so it's not a smooth surface it's like sort of a, it's got like a texture So I hope this has helped you in showing you how to sew on some beads. And then for this, all I did was I fed through the rest of my tail yarn through the middle of the heart. I just think it gives a nice finish. So this is another heart that I've made. This obviously this one just takes a couple of minutes to crochet and I've got this tutorial up on my channel so I'll link that for you also down below the description so you can have a look at that so you just simply feed your tail yarn through the middle there and then form a knot at the back so this one I'll do a separate tutorial on and there you go so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you do come back please leave a like comment and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching